All right, uh, let's look at this WAMAP problem. Uh, it's a linear programming problem where DeAndre runs a bakery that sells two kinds of desserts. DeAndre knows the bakery must make at least nine and at most 55 dozens of the nutty squirrels. The bakery must also make between 25 and 36 dozen of the white chocolate blizzards. The dozens of nutty squirrels take nine minutes in the oven, while dozens of the white chocolate blizzard require 11 minutes in the oven. The bakery only has 792 minutes in the oven available. If dozens of nutty squirrels generate $1.87 in revenue and dozens of white chocolate blizzards generate $110 in revenue, how many dozens of desserts should DeAndre have the bakery make to get the most revenue? All right, so we're going to start with identifying our unknowns. The two things that we don't know are uh, the number of dozens of nutty squirrels to make. So let's let x be the number of dozens of nutty squirrels. And we'll say y is the number of dozens of the white chocolate blizzards there. All right, and our relationships that we have um, is we know that x, the number of nutty squirrels must be at least 9 and 55. So we have a constraint there that x needs to be between 9 and 55. And similarly, we know that y needs to be between 25 and 36. Those are a couple of constraints. And then the other re restriction we have is the total amount of oven time we have. So uh, every dozen of nutty squirrels we use is going to use nine minutes in the oven. So 9x is how much time we're going to spend in the oven for making nutty squirrels. And 11y is the amount of time that we have uh, we're going to spend baking the white chocolate blizzards. And it says we have a total of 792 minutes available. So I've got 9x plus 11y is less than or equal to 90 x to uh, 792 and we're trying to maximize the revenue and the revenue we're going to make is a dollar 87 per dozen of the nutty squirrels so dollar 87 times x plus a dollar 10 times y would be how much revenue we've got uh, we've got to do and so what we want to do is we're going to solve these by graphing so I'm going to start by making a graph. Oh, we also have the restrictions that x must be greater than 0 and y must be greater than 0. Uh, but let's uh, let's do it this way. Um, x on the x-axis, y on the y-axis. And let's look at that first constraint, 9x plus 11y is 792. The easy way to graph that is to look at the intercepts. If uh, x is 0, uh, y would be 792 divided by 11 and that's going to be what about 70 uh, 72 yes yeah, so it's going to cross the x-axis out here at 72 um, let's say that's about 72 there all right and if uh, uh, y so if y is 0 no if x is 0 whoa I got that backwards. If x is 0, y is going to be 72. So that's going to cross 72 on the y-axis there, not 72 on the x-axis. Um, if, oh, and I erased the whole x-axis. There's the x-axis again. OK, and if y is 0, I'm going to have 9x equals 792. So 9 goes into 792. Um, Uh, let's see, it goes in there, 9 times 8 is 72, and I subtract, I get 72, so it would be 88 times. So we're going to cross the x-axis out here at 88, and so my constraint equation, ooh, getting all sorts of fun stuff showing up there on the screen. All right, so there's my constraint equation, 9x plus 11y is 792. Uh, I also have the restriction that x needs to be between 9 and 55. So I'm also adding in this instruction 
restriction that my x values have to be between 9 and 55. So I'm limited to this range, to this interval on the x-axis there between 9 and 55. And my y values need to go between 25 and 36. Now let's see, 36 is half of 72. So that, that's going to be 36 is going to run across to about there. And 25, I don't know, it's somewhere up in this area too. Somewhere about there. Uh, and so what I've got for my feasible region, um, I need to be sort of in this little band, but I also need to be underneath that line in there. And so if I'm looking for the corner points, I'm going to have one down here in the bottom, uh, bottom left corner. Um, it's going to be uh, at the point 925. I'm going to have another one at the top of that kind of uh, branch there. The x coordinate of that point is 9 and the y coordinate is 36. I'm going to have um, another point over here. It looks like at 5525. Right down here in this corner. And I think there might be two more here, uh, corner points there. Um, dealing with this 9x plus 11y is 792. That's the slanted line. And where it's intersecting the line, y equals 36. So I'm going to have another corner point uh, where 9x plus 11y equals 792. Uh, but I know that the y coordinate is going to be 36. So 9x plus 11 times 36 is 792. So the corresponding x coordinate here would be, let's see, 11 times 36 is 396. And if I subtract 396 from both sides of the equation, a little bit more space here, I'll get 9x is equal to um, 5, 4, um, let's see, n's in a 6, uh, and a 9, uh, 396, 9x is equal to 396, and 9 goes in there, 396, uh, 44 times, I believe, yeah. 44 times. So m this corner point here would be um, when y is 96, x is 44. So 44, 36 is another corner point. And then uh, if x is 55, um, I'm looking at this point where our slanted line is intersecting the vertical line at x equals 55 here. If x is equal to 55, 9 times 55 plus 11 y is 792. 9 times 55 is 495 plus 11 y is 752. Subtract the 495 Whoops, that's 792, not 52. I'm sure my numbers are right here. I have a hard time reading my own writing. Uh, so 792, so 495, that's uh, 3. Uh, whoops, nope, gotta carry the one. Uh, should be ended in a seven. So 297. Yeah, I think that's 297. And if we divide both sides by 11, I believe that gives us 27. So we do have another corner point here at uh, 
55 for the x coordinate and 27 for the y coordinate. So now what I want to do is check those five corner points into my objective function and see which one of those gives us the largest revenue. So our objective function was this uh, 187x plus 10y, 110y. So actually let me put all my corner points down here. 925. I've got 925. 936. Uh, 45, 44, 36. And uh, 55, 25. Uh, oh, there's one more. Um, 55.27. All right, so those are the five points, and my revenue was a dollar eighty-seven times x plus a dollar ten times y, and so a dollar eighty-seven times nine plus a dollar ten times 25 uh, works out to be let me find my calculator app here There's my calculator app. Uh, I need a dollar eighty-seven times. Um, what was the other number? I need to switch back to my other app. Oh boy. Oh, that's the same one. Let me pause and work these out. All right, so I worked out the numbers, and uh, if you do the 925 point, you get 44.33. If you do 9 times $1.87 plus 36 times $1.10, it works out to 56.43. Uh, 44 times $1.87 plus 36 times $1.10 is 121.88. Uh, 55 times uh, 187 plus 25 times 110 is 130.35 and finally 55 times 187 plus 27 times $1.10 worked out to be 132.55 and so that's going to be our maximum there 132.55 that's the largest of those values and we want to make 55 nutty squirrels and uh, 27 of the white chocolate blizzards.